The first of the famous 10 usability heuristics of Jacob Nielsen states that an app should always communicate clearly what state it is currently in, so providing users with immediate feedback on their action. One way of doing that is through page indicators or dot indicators, however you want to call them. They are often used in introduction or onboarding screens together with a page view widget to communicate to users the page they are currently on. For today's video, we are focusing on a simple circular shaped indicator. To start off, we create a row with centered main axis alignment and a list generator responsible for creating each individual indicator. Give it a length of 3 and return an animated container widget. Define any animation curve of your choice and give it an arbitrary duration of let's say 500 milliseconds. Since we want our indicator to be a circle, give it the same width and height. And for the box decoration, let's take the color white and a circular border radius that equals the size of the indicator to create a perfect circle. And as you can see, there we have our circle indicator. However, each circle needs a bit more spacing. That's why we add a padding. Give it a symmetric edge insets and set the horizontal value to 5. While this looks better now, we still need to actually change the style of the currently selected circle. So let's change the width parameter based on a given value. Let's say that for example if the index of the circle is 0, the width equals 50 instead of 20. So now always the first circle would look different since its index value is 0. But of course later on this needs to depend on for example the currently selected page. The easiest way to do that is to accept an integer value through our constructor. This has the advantage that our page indicator widget remains stateless and can then adapt to the value it is given. Set the default value to 0 and then we are done. The page indicator now dynamically responds to the value it is given and you can use it in your project however you like to, whether you make it dependent on the current page or change it on button press. If you want to dive deeper into creating your own reusable widgets and how to properly implement and document them, check out my next video where I will cover all that. Until then, have a great time and hopefully see you soon.